Hey guys, so that was standard um, and pretty much I'm picking up all the Adrazis, uh, but mainly this one. <laughs> if I had to tell you to pick up one of them, I would tell you to pick up at least a place of that one. I think it's very good. It's not a bad card at all. So next we will do Modern. I probably should have organized this a little better. This is Modern. This is my Flea Market. This is Princess Cube. And I believe this is EDH, yeah. So Modern. This land is extremely cheap. Yes, I do understand it's been reprinted in, what's that set called? Zendikar versus Aldrazi. Yes, I understand there's a reprint and that's why it's cheap. However, when you look at the other lands, they're just insanely expensive. Celestial Colonnade, uh, Creeping Tar Pit, as we're going to see, I believe. And yeah, Creeping Tar Pit is in this pile. They are just extremely, extremely expensive. I probably could have moved Creeping Tar Pit to Legacy because it's actually more applicable in Legacy, but I will talk about the Man Lands. Definitely very good. I mean, it's a few dollars, why not? Arbiter, I, he sees play now. I don't know if I can call it a tier two deck. I don't want to call it a tier two deck, but kind of is. I guess 2.5 is where I would put it. And he's very good with Ghost Quarter, very good with Path, very good. Obviously, I'm playing him in my Adrazi Hate Bears deck. So the more I play with him, the more I realize he has very unique ability. Terminus, I mean, these are just regular pickups. Boris Charm. Lingering Souls does not see much play, but hey, it's you know it's tradable into a place at four promos. Uh, this is the other card. This card has been reprinted in the Zendikar. Essentially, what I'm saying is there's some very unique cards, extremely priced, priced extremely low. I remember this card being like 15 bucks. I remember like being happy that I traded one, uh, traded for one at 15 bucks, and now he's like a few dollars or something. Still a very good card. Still an incredibly powerful card. I like him a lot. Planeswalkers are Planeswalkers. Avengers, I, I need to get my Aether Vials and maybe I'm gonna make a trade binder a little later today or I mean when you see it, it'll probably be like a few days. Maybe it'll be the first video, I don't know. But anyway, I'll make a trade binder and it is one of the cards I need. I need Aether Vials because I don't have any of those. So the problem, okay, the problem when is like when you go to GPs, <laughs> you forget what you forget like that's your open copy a play set of and then you just have to rebuy it's the worst case scenario we're in brisk heights master the waves malera and Falia. i will show you my Falia collection i have gotten most of it outside of storage so i was able to find it because the price of Falia is about eight nine dollars now and the price of malera is about ten dollars at least in my local game store and they trade easily and I don't even want to trade him away for that. Rune Diver, I love that card. I love the, so I'll go into this next, next week. Full art, full art cards are very good. Like people will say, oh, blah, 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 blah. And you know, maybe they're not the best card ever, but the artwork is fantastic. And at some EDH or some very casual level, they trade easily. Again, most of the times I don't really care about the card value. I care about how liquid it is. I would rather have a hundred one dollar cards that I can move within a day than one one hundred dollar card that takes me forever to right, find the right buyer. Actually, I had an experience about that today at the store, and it was a very interesting experience. Maybe I'll make a video about it. Creeping Tar Pit. I mean, I have six of them. Uh, they were very pricey, but now that JST Mind Sculptor is so Creeping Tar Pit is very good against Jace. Now that Jace is reprinted and this card is not, that's good. I expect its price to go up a little bit more as more people have access to Jace and they play the Miracles deck, they play um, lots of these. The Creeping Tar Pit, when you compare it to the Battle for Zendikar Manlands, it, there's no comparison. This card is just hands-on better. You might make the argument Celestial Colonnade is better in modern, and that's a good argument to make. But I'm going to make the argument that free two, unblockable, is a planeswalker killer. It just kills planeswalkers, like, and you don't really need to invest more into it. And it's one, a blue and a black. So compared to like the red white one, which is like a two one double strike. Yeah, I would much rather have a free two unblockable, especially when my I need to kill your planeswalker. And 
and fetch lands. I will get into another long discussion about fetch lands sometime later. Uh, when should you pick him up? Uh, when should you make your playset? Is what is the long term outlook on them? Including the Zendikar fetch lands, which have creeped up to seventy plus dollars for catacombs and the two blue ones, Misty and Tarn, which is. Sad, but you know, I've been waiting for my Misties and Tarns forever. Cause I was like, oh, it's gonna be reprinted. Nope. Oh, it's gonna be reprinted. Nope. So, uh, in hindsight, it would have been better if I purchased them a year ago and, or not sold my versions of it. But from like for the last 12 months, it's just been like speculations about the card being reprinted. So I sold them <laughs> and now I kind of need them back. So uh, I have the non-blue ones, but I sold my blue ones because at the time the non-blue ones weren't even that expensive. But now Catacombs is 75 bucks. So anyway, that is Modern. Bye guys.